Good morning. I'm Tasha Burke Peart, and I'm a technology program specialist with the ed tech department. And I am excited to be here. I'm so happy that you all are with us. And I hope you enjoyed uh, Dr. Monica Burns, um, all the strategies that she gave. If you weren't able to capture everything that she gave, don't worry. We have the video, which is on our YouTube channel, um, using that same link that you used. So you can always go back to it and refer to all those wonderful strategies that she gave. Speaking of our YouTube channel, um, just, just a couple of housekeeping things um, that I'm gonna go through before uh, I bring Anne uh, Cosma from Flipgrid, who is going to lead us off with communication. Our YouTube channel, um, we're trying to get those likes and subscribes and you know get our subscriber base up there. So go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified of future uh, live streams that we're doing. Um, use the chat box to communicate. We have moderators in the chat with a wrench um, by their name. They can answer the questions, but yeah, you're going to want to chat today. You're going to make sure that you chat because I know, especially in this one, we have a huge prize that I'm going to be talking about later um, that we're giving away. Um, in the chat earlier in Dr. Monica Burns session, there was a couple of people concerned about not having Twitter. I know that Adobe has so graciously given us those swag bags and a copy of um, Monica Burns book. Um, and we're looking for some tweets, but don't worry. Don't worry at all because on this and the following sessions today, as long as you're chatting, um, you get a chance to win one of the big prizes. Um, so, but if you are tweeting, it's EdTech PBC and use the hashtag PBC, PB Tech Talk. That's PB Tech Talk. So um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the schedule. And Cosma uh, from Flipgrid is going to be talking about communication. I can't wait. I love, love, love Flipgrid. And I know that you guys use Flipgrid and you have some wonderful ideas and tools. So she's going to bring some more strategies um, top of mind about communication. Um, Dr. Monica Burns is going to be back talking about creativity. And then Carla Jefferson is here talking about critical thinking. Carla was with us in June and we can't wait to, you know, we're, we're really excited to have her back. Um, and then of course, Kevin Honeycutt, um, one of our favorites, will be talking about collaboration. So I did mention those swag bag by um, Adobe. Thank you very much. Adobe is uh, you know, near and dear to my heart. So you want to tweet to win a swag bag, um, copy of the book, got a t-shirt. We got these cards here, which I happen to have. Um, these are like... Um, Thought starters, uh, just wonderful facilitating guys to get your kids talking and communicating. Um, so you're gonna want a copy of that as well. So without further ado, um, I'll stop talking now and let Anne from Flipgrid come on up. Hello, hello, thank you, Tasha. I'm so excited to be here with you all this morning. All right, friends, I believe that we are ready to roll. So I just wanna say thank you so much to Palm Beach County for inviting me back to share today. It's been so awesome to see the tweets and the chats in the last session with Dr. Monica Burns kicking off an incredible day as you explore the four C's. So um, I'm here to share with you again, and my name is Anne Cosma. I love to describe my role as a teacher helping teachers, but I'm an educator innovation lead on Team Flipgrid. And for the next little bit of time, I'm gonna be talking about empowering every voice, how you can use Flipgrid to level up communication. So are you ready to dig in? I'm so excited. Again, thank you for inviting me. And what a great day, not only with Monica and Kevin and Carla, I'm excited to participate and help you all explore the four C's. And I think that today is just a brilliant day to kind of dig in, learn on and see new possibilities. And I'm gonna be talking about pathways and how pathways to letting our students share their voice to me is the best and most inspiring way to level up communication. So 
this is what today's all about, right? And I get to talk about communication today, but um, let's let's roll. Like I'm ready to dig into this. And before we really get started, I want to take you back in time. So let's go back, and I want to start with this question: Do you remember a pivotal moment in your educator life? Think back, and maybe this is something that you can start in that comment thread. If you want to share what was something that changed or that pivotal moment that sparked a new idea or you used to transform teaching or engage students in a new way to learn. I will never forget when those moments first started for me. This was in 2010 and we got these things called iPod touch devices. And friends, these were the first generation. There was no camera. There was no camera on this. And we thought, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna use these? And immediately, immediately we saw shifts and we saw new possibilities for our students to get drawn in to learning activities and learning journeys. The sweet boy was so focused on his work, he had no clue I was standing in front of his face taking a picture. But I remember these moments. And if you notice that photograph on the left, there was a teeny tiny microphone that my students would add to their iPod touch device. And you see right there, she's recording herself read a story aloud or an educational app or the chance to hear a fluent reader model a story being read aloud. So many possibilities that sparked changes and allowed us to level up the way that we were teaching and learning. But that teeny tiny microphone was that first shift that changed everything. And friends, then I was lucky to be one of the first teachers on my campus to get the iPad. And I did have that original iPad without a camera also. But if you notice on the back of this device, there was a camera. And we put these in our students' hands and said, open that camera, start recording. And this was in an English language development class where students were practicing oral language, fluency, grammar, syntax, learning how to level up their own communication skills. And I love that face on the sweet boy in the yellow shirt who's like, what the heck is going on? This is me. This is my voice. And that changed everything. Again, just a few examples as I took a trip down memory lane in these photographs, but what is it that levels up possibilities for our students to communicate? To me, it's that camera on a device. We walk around with these devices in our hands all day long and have so many possibilities to use them, to capture stories, to curate content, to share, to reflect. And look at that smile of that little girl, hopefully, to engage them, to draw them in, to provide some hard fun or challenges where they can share their voice, demonstrate learning, and share who they are as a scholar in the learning community. Friends, the power of the camera on your device is infinite. And I experienced this in my own classroom. This example is simply a boy videotaping himself as he read a story aloud to model his own oral fluency, to check for understanding, to share his takeaways, to respond to literature and dig in with those text elements and story, story elements. So these are just a few simple pictures to show how it started for me and a few moments that changed everything. And so why did it change? It changed, I mean, I keep saying the word, it changed everything, but my why in the classroom radically changed. And as soon as we started putting those devices in our students' hands, as soon as we started to let them share their voice, capture their learning, create content, I knew my why was to empower authentic voice for an authentic audience. And that looks different and that's okay. And there's lots of ways to get from point A to point B. And today I'm gonna to share some of those examples. And this was probably one of the biggest journeys I ever got to take with my young scholars. 
we created book talks. I called them brain power book reviews. And you'll notice on that bulletin board, the question is cut off, but it says, who is your audience? And that little poster down at the bottom that says, I can remember, talk, and write about the books I read during the school year. I wanted my students to know their voice mattered. And learning moments click, and those aha moments click at different times for students, but I wanted learning to come alive for them, and I wanted them to celebrate the journey and know that their voice mattered. And in those moments, radical transformation happened. I noticed my students were more engaged. They were motivated. They took ownership of their work. They had increased confidence. And in my school community where 87% of our students were English learners, we saw transformational change in oral language fluency, retention of information, skills, and that changed everything. So I'm curious, take a moment in the comments. Have you had a moment that changed everything? Is it changing right now? Might a new idea you get related to the four C's today be a spark to change something for you? Friends, another moment for me came in March of 2012 when I attended the Q conference and I heard these three words, quit, complain, or innovate. And those words shook me. They rocked me in terms of the way I taught, the way I provided pathways for my students. Couldn't quit my job. Complaining did no good for me. So I chose to innovate and I chose to think outside the box and go on that journey, even if it was sometimes scary with my students, to push buttons together and find new ways to share authentic voices for authentic audiences. Later that same year, I went to my first ISTE conference and I heard three more words, explore, share, and contribute. And those are things that I strive to do in my role as a teacher helping teachers. So today I'm just super excited to share some new ideas with you that hopefully you can take away or say, I can do that tomorrow. So friends, remember teaching is a journey and all of these moments change us. So let's ask ourselves, how can we learn on and level up our craft? And today, as I share these examples about communication, please know communication to me means student voice. Communication means so many things. It looks different for students as we think about learning modalities. Perhaps it's written, perhaps it's spoken. Maybe it's creativity or sharing or even dance or sign language. It looks different for everybody, but let's ask our students, how do they share what they think, right? How do they share? Communication is voice and voice is expression. So as you explore the four C's today and we dig into communication, I wanna remind you, check out those ISTE standards. Friends, this is something that helped guide my understanding as I was first journeying into the four C's as well. And if you're not familiar with the ISTE standards, it's a series of guides to help us not only as educators and learning facilitators, administrators, but also some guides for our students. So empowered learner, digital citizen, knowledge constructors, innovative designers, computational thinkers, creative communicators, and that's where we're gonna dig in in just a moment, and global collaborators. But in a hyper-connected digital world, and especially as we all shift and pivot, whether you're face-to-face -face or hybrid or remote, these are guides to help us empower our students. So as we think about our students as creative communicators, this really means to help them clearly express themselves for a variety of purposes, using different platforms, tools, styles, formula, and different types of digital media, right? How do we help them achieve their goals? So tons of platforms. You might hear different tools mentioned today. I'm gonna share some Flipgrid resources, but Technology is an and, not an or. All of these tools can help you empower your students, right? Help students create. Give them the opportunity to dig into these four C's as they own 
their learning journey. So ISTE standards for teachers as well. How can we foster a community of learning and a culture where students take ownership of their goals, both in independent and group settings. So in the comments, here's another great chance. I know what the prize is that's coming at the end of this session, friends. Use that chat feature and comment. Are you new to the ISTE standards? Have you heard of these before? Did that just spark a new idea for you to level up communication? But let's dig in, all right? I want to ask you, how can you use Flipgrid to level up communication? And I'm going to share some examples. But friends, please know this is all about leveling up communication. All right. Lots of tools will get us there. I'm going to share about Flipgrid, but think big picture with these next examples. All right. If you are brand new to Flipgrid, please know Flipgrid is a 100% free video communication platform. You as the educator create that account and you invite students to participate. So you could simply get started at flipgrid.com and then you invite students to participate. All right. So it's as simple as creating a topic. Think of a topic as a learning assignment, a discussion, an activity, a response. You determine how you want your students to access that and share it with your learning community to start that conversation. Endless possibilities, tons of pathways for your students, all right? Again, a Flipgrid topic is a discussion prompt. It is how you ignite conversation among your community. All right. Again, you remain in control. You have the access. You determine who is going to add a response. I would encourage you to use your school's email domain. If you're working with young scholars, create a simple username and then you share it out. And then the magic happens. All right. Look right here. Every response, every selfie, every video represents somebody sharing their unique voice. And they just use that Flipgrid camera with all kinds of creative features. So let me show you real quick what it looks like. Notice that box at the top that says enter a join code. Let's say, for example, I want to invite you to my karaoke party. You could even go to flipgrid.com right now and type in EdTech Karaoke. And what you're going to see is folks from all around the world that we invited to share their voice. And though this was a singing party, friends, using Flipgrid to level up communication is as simple as sharing that code. And then friends, click on that red record button to record their response. Now inside of the Flipgrid camera, you have some options and some effects. And the options are full of creative possibilities. Notice you can upload a video clip. You could use that brand new mic only mode for podcasting or remaining off camera. You could mirror video to talk about author's purpose or even interview yourself as you're learning a new language. Mute the audio to have a silent video, a paper slide video, or use our built-in screen recorder option. Now, if you click on effects, you're going to see other creative possibilities. These include filters, frames, emoji, text, drawing, a board feature, and an upload photo option as well. I know sometimes it's overwhelming to think about all the ways you can use technology. And I love to say that Flipgrid can be as simple or as sophisticated as you want it to be. But all of these options and all of these effects allow your students to level up creativity and expression as they communicate their learning, a new skill, a reflection, or even the power of an introduction of their name and identity. Friends, my good friend and colleague, Jornay Armand, loves to say, if you can think it, you can flip grid it. And I'm going to take a moment to let you look at this screen. Whether you're in pre-K, middle school, high school, university, 
Connecting with your families or community, using this as an administrator with your staff or your professional learning community, or even in your organization and enterprise. Whether it's a book talk, talking about a historical event, doing a state of the classroom meeting on Mondays, sharing a virtual field trip, talking about fluency and phonics, practicing your dissertation speech, or sharing a school celebration. If you can think it, you can flip grid it. And as you think about communication, let's think of pathways. Let's think of opportunities to share, to celebrate, and to showcase those learning moments. So now let's consider communication and problem solving, all right? We're gonna get into some really great examples from the Flipgrid community. You definitely can find all of these on social. I love to say we have the loudest, raddest, most passionate community of educators on the planet sharing with the hashtag Flipgrid for all. But think about this, communication allowing you as the educator to use that board feature to talk about how to solve an equation or students using the board feature in the drawing tool to go through the steps for solving an equation, right? I love these examples and I'm a visual learner, so hopefully these help you. On the left, you see the student's creativity using the pixel fit feature, some of those text options, the drawing tools to create math about me. So yeah, that could be creativity, but they're making it all about them using academic vocabulary, math skills and strategies, and leveling up communication, talking math, and talking about themselves. And if anybody's teaching high school, I love sharing what Mike Mohammed does. He's an AP physics teacher, and he's using Flipgrid to share motion assessments where students are talking about terminology, calculations, and graph, and acceleration, and position versus time. They're simply using the board feature, the text feature, and some emojis and the drawing tool inside of Flipgrid. So this can be as simple or as sophisticated as you want it to be. And I love this example from Brenda where her students were tasked to choose two vocabulary words. Show an example, give a definition, draw a picture, or act out a word. Tons of possibilities for students to share. And my good friend Kristen Merrill is showing how she, as an educator, is using the Flipgrid camera tool, custom stickers, and the drawing and text tool to create anchor charts and annotate text and even model thinking. So, friends, please know there are tons of pathways. Let's talk about some real-world applications, right? Math stories, math in real life. Former first grade teacher here, so I would send my students off with their device and say, go find 3D objects and use the mathematical language to describe what you see in your environment, right? What about people using math in the real world? Taxes, tips, discounts, financial planning. So many possibilities. And I can't skip this example about pancakes and yes, pancakes to teach solids, liquids, gases, states of matter. Josh Satterfield challenged his students to use the Flipgrid camera to explain their thinking in states of matter. And goodness gracious, a pancake assessment sounds pretty rad to me. What about conducting experiments? Or if your students are in a remote or hybrid situation where they're learning at home and using found materials, or if you're in a face-to-face -face setting, again, these are just pathways, but think about Investigations, what does it look like when they're collecting data and analyzing it? Did they create something or invent and create a model or a prototype? Can they evaluate their evidence and support a hypothesis, make predictions, comparisons, or conduct explorations of the world through virtual field trips? I love this example from Mr. Wells, simply talking about using that mic only mode to let students record podcasts about a medical article they read, right? This is one way if students want to be off camera, they could simply use that mic option, right? Here's an example I shared with primary teachers. Anybody teaching phonics, right? How do you do that 
with technology. Do you do blending, segmenting, onset, rhyme, isolating, beginning, middle, end sounds? That's just the mic option inside of Flipgrid along with some stickers, all right? But how does that support our students as they're acquiring language, as they're using language, as they're representing and communicating their understanding and skill development? What about communication for inquiry, right? Creating journals, sharing perspective writing, sharing a reflection. This looks different. And I know I'm just sort of sharing big picture ideas here, but think about your county. Think about every classroom. Think about all of the students and all of the educators and all of the different ways we're teaching and learning. Communication looks different. Learning looks different. So these are just ideas, hopefully, to spark a new idea for you to try something new. I love this example from Martin Odima Jr. Online learning, he used a rap as a way to remix his writing lessons and students transform their final written work into pieces of creativity and then shared with their peers, right? Or Virginia Castaneda shared how her IB visual arts used Flipgrid for artists talk. Each student had a word and conceptualized it into a piece of art. Research, communication to support the retelling of history or the contributions of people, cultures, countries, groups, making cultural comparisons or exploring future professions or current events and news reports. Communication in the arts. We've seen so many virtual art showcases, musical showcases. And I love this example of how they're using the Flipgrid augmented reality QR codes to share major art movements in modern history. You hear straight from those students, right? I remember making a pantyhose and wire sculpture, but what does this show and interpret representative of modern history art movements? Friends, one of the things I wanna point out that's built into Flipgrid, not only are all those creative options and features, but I am so proud to take a few moments and I know we're coming close on time, but I have to talk about the immersive reader. And if you're not familiar with Flipgrid and you're going to try it out or get started, please know the immersive reader is built in, fully embedded throughout Flipgrid. So here's a great way to transition. Dear Flipgrid, maybe I'm late to this one, but the immersive reader feature is a game changer. Thank you for helping T's make virtual learning interactive and giving students a voice. So what is the immersive reader? Anytime you see this blue icon or your community sees it, you can click on it, they can click on it, and it's a built-in accessibility feature. It allows you to change the voice speed and selection and have content read aloud for a support. You can go into text features, change the size. I know Comic Sans gets a bad rap, but it's a very visually accessible font. You can contrast between a dark or light mode. You also can turn on syllabication, identify parts of speech. There are so many tools embedded, line focusing, and friends, there's even a translation feature. So I chose this example as Haitian Creole, but there's over 70 languages represented, and you can toggle between the original and the translated by word or document. And these are just supports to provide help for your students built into Flipgrid. And if you think about some other ways we empower voice and level up communication, Flipgrid provides editable captions and text comments. And I mentioned that Flipgrid augmented reality QR code, but check this out. This educator is talking about using closed captioning to help language students or students who might have a learning disability or difficulty or even hard of hearing students. So are we making content accessible as we level up communication and provide pathways for students to share their own voice? whatever that looks like. 
I love these examples from um, the Ridgeway team, right? Nate is sharing about how he's using Flipgrid QR codes in the content that he's sharing with his students on the left. But this one on the right got me and it says, all students, are, should be able and deserve to access learning. So I have a new goal, augmented reality through Flipgrid. If I give readings or a worksheet, I want students to be able to hear me read to them. Just scan the QR code and try it for yourself. Friends, this example gets me too. And if you've ever heard me speak before, you know I talk about all the feels. And this example from Stacy Canaday's from uh, more than a year ago, but it is still extremely relevant when it comes to students sharing their voice. And if you notice the text on screen says, who says you can't have ASL comic books? Having students illustrate with Flipgrid QR codes as text. Add the best ones to your library and students can read the book. And you see that comic book coming to life as you scan that QR code. And this educator is using ASL as she shares with her community. Endless possibilities. Celebrate diverse voices, right? Friends, I know we're coming close on time. I just said that, but I have to ask you, is this year a series of moments that's changing everything for you? Today's a beautiful opportunity to dig into the four C's and ask yourself, how can I change? How can I empower my students? How can I shift something in my instruction to provide a new pathway for my students to share their voice? This treat from Katerina Perales says, I'm literally in tears. This student moved to the US last semester and she never talked, but today was different. She talked. I love how Flipgrid gives students the confidence to break out of their shell. And this one, whether it's academic or whether it's purely meant to support and build community, Shannon Sorrell shared, if you teach in elementary school, you must create a random things grid, right? There's my timer, so I know it's time. I have had more than 40 posts in the last month about random things that my students want to share. They are obsessed. Friends, how will you level up communication in your learning community? What can you do? I haven't looked over at the comments yet because I've just been focused on my screen, but I cannot wait to go in and explore. And hopefully you've been sharing ideas or brain zings about new ways to level up communication. And if you know me, you know I love to play to learn. So if you want to test, try, push all the buttons. I did create a public topic you can go and add to. It's fully moderated, so I will be the one who sees your responses, but feel free to share an idea for how you can level up communication. That's the link on the screen right there, and perhaps they'll pop it into the chat as well, but if you simply use this code, the one you see right on the screen, share a video or a text comment and share an idea that you have for how you can level up communication and empower every voice in your learning community. Friends, we love to celebrate the incredible work you're doing, so definitely feel free to share out on social. If you wanna tag Flipgrid or if you wanna share it, use that hashtag Flipgrid for all. But I simply wanna say thank you. Thank you for every single thing you're doing day in, day out to not only keep the learning going, but to explore possibilities and encourage your community and empower your community and empower every voice in your learning community. So on behalf of Team Flipgrid at Microsoft, I simply wanna say thank you. And thank you for inviting me to join again today and share new ideas, new possibilities, and new pathways for you to empower every voice. Thank you so much, friends. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, I am always just, absolutely positively amazed absolutely amazed um and these ideas leveling up communication giving students a voice the thing that is so phenomenal is that it crosses all levels all content areas it doesn't matter what you teach you can you can um any one of these strategies you can apply so sharing is caring i encourage you all 
please go back and look at this video and tell the teachers at your school, tell everybody at your school about Flipgrid. Make that a challenge that you can just, you know, do it together in your team meetings and figure out how you can use it because I guarantee you it is uh, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tool. All right, I'm going to bring up, um, because we're running out of time, um, Trent, let's go ahead and bring up my screen so that we can see. Um, all right, you don't need to flood the chat at all because you have been chatting. And so um, this, we're pretty excited to announce. Um, we have a Chromebook, a Dell Chromebook that we're gonna be giving away. Um, and all you have to do is just chat. Make sure that you've chatted in the past 10 minutes. Um, and then we're going to draw a name. Um, when your name is drawn, uh, all you need to do is email Dana, Dana Rubenstein, and we're going to put her um, email address up in just a minute, and she will be the one to send you, give you all the information about the prize. So without further ado, let's go ahead and draw a name for the Chromebook. We're gonna draw a name for the Chromebook. I'm just gonna look and see what that name is so that we can we can keep going. And then after, just while we're doing that, while we're waiting for our winner, I just wanna remind you um, that Monica Burns is gonna be back um, talking to us about creativity. Carla Jefferson will be here talking about critical thinking. And then of course, Kevin Honeycutt talking about collaboration. So we have a winner, Charmaine, Charmaine Salas, Charmaine, congratulations. You are the winner of um, the Chromebook. So we're really, really, really excited and um, Email Dana Rubenstein, Dana.Rubenstein at palmbeachschools.org, and you'll get all the information about um, your Chromebook and how you can get it. So on behalf of the EdTech team, we all want to thank Anne um, at Flipgrid for all those wonderful, wonderful, wonderful strategies. Again, you can re uh, watch this video using the same link and take your time, share it with the people on your campus, get some good ideas, use that um, Tech Talk 2021 ideas on Flipgrid. We want to hear how you are using Flipgrid for your instruction, leveling up communication, giving students a voice. And again, I'm Tasha, and on behalf of Trent, John, Dana, Rebecca, and John, we're going to see you in the next session. Thank you.